introduction. <laughs> do, do we jump in with an actual introduction this time? Like right. who we are and stuff? So do, do you want me to leave that? Oh, go on, go on. Um, so hi guys, we are just here with Jason and we just thought that we might actually introduce ourselves this time because we're really bad at doing that. So I am <laughs> Hayley and this is... Ruth. Ruth. And we are from It Doesn't Have To Be This Hard and we are, this podcast right now is the It's A Hard Business podcast. Wow, Hayley, that was so good. It's A Hard Business podcast. Um, <laughs> and Jason, can you tell us who you are? Yes, sure. Um, sure to everyone. Uh, obviously, I'm Jason, uh, born and raised here in the Waikato, and um, love the Waikato. Uh, I, I have background in education, so I uh, was a high school teacher uh, originally. That was my first uh, serious job, and then uh, did that for seven or eight years. And then I kind of just got fascinated with this whole world of like personal and professional development and coaching and um, got into that, and uh, that's what I've been doing for the last seven or eight years. I realized the other day that it's been my new thing has been as long as teaching was and that was like a really cool moment oh, to that's go like cool. wow yeah is that how you guys know each other through teaching no friendship no. for way back friendship from before <laughs> that i think oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah 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 okay yeah. we also had our first daughters our first babies mm -hmm. about two weeks apart mm. so we've kind of done the parenting journey together as well oh wow okay yeah. so you have how many children I've got three kids uh, yeah. so they're um, seven five and two yeah 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 okay so do we have any like subject we're gonna jump in on or should we just like throw random questions at you just go for it with questions. Go for it. I think that's probably okay. the best do you way. Wanna, do, do you want to tell us what you do yep. day to day in your job? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so um, I describe what I do as workplace culture coaching. So it's this idea of going into um, different organisations and um, getting people to put the tools down, so to speak, and uh, have a type of conversation that they might not have naturally without um, someone coming in and facilitating one-on-one -on -one conversations, team conversations, about um, what are my most natural uh, talents, gifts? Am I investing enough in those? Am I aware enough of what mine are, what yours are? Um, and how can we use that increased awareness to, um, to have real clarity? Uh, it's kind of like two-sided for me in, in that I kind of feel like if people know themselves well enough and they're secure in themselves well enough then they make room for the differences in others and uh, if they don't know themselves very well and they're insecure about who they are yeah. then they don't make room or they find other people's differences as a threat or a challenge uh, rather mm. than welcoming them um, so kind of yeah creating cultures where people are willing to focus on each other's strength and and focus on their own yeah. And these cultures aren't just in workplaces, right? Like I know, I'm not sure if you're still doing it, but I know you have people that coach that work with couples and yeah. relationships. Yeah. Um, and kind of that area as well, which is yeah. amazing. Yeah, in the... fact, I had a session with Jace and my husband <laughs> mm -hmm. a couple years back. Yeah. And I have to say it was one of the best things we've done for our relationship because... Okay. That's cool. We were both able to identify our own individual strengths, mm -hmm. but we were able to figure out how they work together. Yeah. And then why we piss each other off sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And it's actually because our strengths are clashing. Mm. Like um, Dave has, I have positivity, but Dave has like a risk adverse kind of strength. Yeah. And so that grinds me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Or he's got like intellection, like a lot of the intellectual strengths. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas mine are more like interpersonal and yeah. connection and communication. And mm. so um, even just kind of having those understandings of who we are and how we work together has been incredibly helpful. So I can see how bringing that into a workplace or a team or what you do mm. is just like so powerful. Yeah, it's cool. It's so rewarding. I, I think the, the coolest part is like often when I go in and work with a team, uh, the things that are frustrating each other the most, or like the people who uh, one person might draw away from, they end up realizing like the fact that we're so different, like what you're describing with yourself and Dave, the fact that we're so different actually makes us an incredibly strategic partnership. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Um, like you hear people talk about opposites attract and 
um, and I don't know that there's you know scientific validity <laughs> to that but one thing that we find with this tool which is a, a well-researched tool uh, is that um, you can kind of almost look at it and say opposites attract if we allow that to happen and if we're aware enough you know like if okay. we've got a if we've got a language for those differences yeah um, and we can call them out then we can allow them to be strategic partnerships yeah. uh, otherwise they will just be things that piss each other off yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah totally. i remember sitting in on a um, strength strengths training session once in a team it was a mm -hmm. team of accountants oh yeah and there was definitely like lots of light bulb moments that those people were all having and almost like joking around with each other and taking the piss out of each other about their strengths and the and like yeah, yeah. kind of how it all worked together in the work yeah. environment mm. yeah 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 it was like very much lots of light bulb moments i think for everybody yeah cool yeah, yeah so to your point or your question about like the different spaces that this can play out in um I uh, have the opportunity now to uh, lead an organisation where we, we're basically a community of coaches uh, across Aotearoa and um, some of them are in corporate, some of them are doing uh, uh, more personal coaching, uh, some of them are in education. There's a real, real range of people who are delivering this, this tool that we use to discover and talk about strengths in, in lots of different spaces, which is cool because I kind of like, I don't get to do as much of the hands-on coaching as much, but I get to hear other people's stories about the different spaces that they're working in a heap, right. so. Okay, so can we plug you then? So yeah. <laughs> where where yeah. does everyone find you if they're kind of interested in this before we dive into the rest of yeah. the episode? So yep. you have just started a... Oh yeah, we've just, I was just telling these guys <laughs> <laughs> that we're a little bit slow to the social media game, but um, so we're called Strengths Network. So the strength has an S on the end, that's we have to always... Ah. Make sure people know. Yeah, pure, strengths. Plural. Oh, I yeah. can't even speak. <laughs> strengths Network. And, and so you can just find us, first of all, at strengthsnetwork.org, and that gives you heaps of information about our coaches and the work they're doing and stuff. And then uh, if you type Strengths Network into uh, LinkedIn or, or Instagram uh, or Facebook, you'll find us there too. So, um, like I say, we're just getting started in some of those spaces. <laughs> Actually, it's been kind of cool, like, um, the whole thing's been quite organic, to use an overused word, um, and, and there hasn't needed to be a whole lot of promo around it for some time. But we've actually learnt that um, that is seasonal, like you can only go so long with that yeah. sort of organic uptake from people, yeah. and then you really do need to give it a nudge, and, and, and we're kind of just in that phase at the moment. So. Yeah. Mm. So do you guys find that now that you're transitioning to be more engaged online, is it the social platforms you guys are more engaged on now? Yeah. 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 So prior to that, would it have been a lot of referrals? A lot of referrals, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, who you know, real Kiwi kind of like two degrees of separation <laughs> kind of stuff. Like, oh, I came to your training because so-and-so recommended it. But um, yeah, we're just quite keen for people to know that uh, if they say like, if they're HR, in, a, in an organization they could come and it could just be about supporting their organization it doesn't have to be about like i'm going to change my whole job to be about coaching um which is what i did my story was that i was learned about the tool and like resigned from teaching about two months later and, and was into it which, i was gonna ask that i was yeah. like where, where did it go from teaching yeah how did it go from teaching to being a coach uh, uh, this, yeah cool question i think that um when I look back at teaching, I loved it. Yeah. And I think I was all right at it. I don't think I was great, but it was really about growth development. It wasn't about, so I taught music, but yeah. it, I realized more and more, it wasn't about music yeah. um, as much as I loved that. It was about the like seeing light bulbs come on and seeing people grow. And then, um, so I, I kind of started getting a few leadership roles or being invited to do stuff and I was like quite shocked by there's not many resources or I found there weren't many resources for like how do you understand others well yeah so I picked this up um, um, my colleagues um, the, the school paid for me to go and do this training course which was cool but they probably regret <laughs> yeah. that now because <laughs> then you're like two months later hey I really love what I've it learned was. now bye yeah pretty much yeah but like a little similar to what Ruth was saying, I think what really sealed the deal for me was understanding um, others around me. So like understanding the people closest to me and having light bulb mm. moments for myself. 
Like if it was just about going and doing the training and enjoying it, that wouldn't have been enough to like hand the resignation in and go for it. It was like I experienced the clarity of like understanding others yeah. and I was like, man, this is really cool. And then I want to be about this. And then we were into it and we just started a family. And I was like, just going to say, yeah. I remember this. It was such a big year for you guys yeah. having Aria yeah. and you transitioning your job. Yeah. Like there was we a lot going out on. Of, we were both teachers. And so that's like pretty stable. Yeah. Stable and that's um, scary, right? Yeah. To self-employment. To self-employment. Yeah. 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 And new self-employment. It's not like you're doing exactly what you were doing before. It's a whole new yeah. thing yeah. that you're yeah. then going to be like, how do I earn an income from like yep. this new thing <laughs> after leaving my stable job while my wife has also left her stable job yeah. while we have a newborn baby. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly what, that's intense. That's, what, that's, that's what, what it was. Like. It was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was so grateful that like, that, um, and you probably have other people on this podcast talk who are more qualified in this space, but like, I was so grateful for a few friends that had done self-employment and started a business who said to me, like, five to seven years, man, like, just strap in, you know, yeah. because it's going to take some time. And um, I was, like, so naive. I'm high in positivity and, and, and <laughs> Clifton Strengths, this tool we've been talking about, so, which can border a little bit on naivety, um, but, like, Maybe just optimism. <laughs> like, just always the optimist. And so... Yeah. It hurt at first to hear like five to seven years, um, just grind it out for that long. And but I bet you were like, no, nah, I can do it soon. Yeah, oh, like no, no. definitely. It's <laughs> Did you do it sooner? Five to seven months, and I'll be sus. <laughs> <you know>? yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's been very true. Like, yeah. like we we've um, survived, and yeah. and and uh, I feel quite proud of like those early years and and what we were able to do, um, and uh, how little. Hannah had to work when she didn't really want to work and so I'm grateful for the, that time but it definitely now that I'm eight years into it, seven, seven, eight years into it now I'm kind of like I feel like it has turned a little bit of a corner in terms of stability and income and just comfort in it all yeah. so yeah. yeah yeah that's a really cool story I think like Ruth you'd have something similar where you left your full-time mm. income to jump into photography and I know a lot of the people that listen to this, whenever they're going out to start something on their own, this is a massive fear that people have around what's going to happen if I can't actually get the bookings or I can't get the clients or the customers, whatever industry it's in. It's mm. massive. Yeah. And here's three people who have done it yeah. in different mm. ways and different stories. And you guys both have children and mm. had children during this time as well, which is really impressive to say. Me, yeah. Just like yeah. My, me and my dog. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think it's I think it's courageous whatever the context yeah. is uh, yeah. you know to, to jump into to self-employment and but like obviously massively rewarding yes and um there's been like so much flex in it so many moments where i just like wouldn't make it, well i pretty much wouldn't make any other decision like it's just been yeah. it's been really cool exciting but a bit of a roller coaster yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just a small one there yeah. just as the last two have, two years have been for all of us in yeah. self-employment, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, well and truly, it's been a crazy yeah. couple of years. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have a question to jump in with? Uh, yeah, so I guess I'm thinking about the people that are listening of photographers out there mm. and what um, you could talk to them about that might kind of be relevant mm. around knowing strengths. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, well, as someone who's not in this industry, uh, I'll, I'll, I can do my best, and if it doesn't <laughs> relate super well, then you can delete it or something. There are other people who listen <laughs> yeah. to it. It's fine. Go for yeah. it, Jason. I, I think this, like, this whole sense of um, security in self, um, w which I mentioned earlier, okay. would be a biggie, I think, in creative industry because... Um, I'm sure, and again, I'm not an expert, but I'm sure it's really tempting to like make comparison or to look at other people's work and think, oh, maybe I should do more of that or more of this. And, and I think one of the um, really strong parts uh, about what I get to do is the sense of like knowing self well enough, um, being secure in self, uh, uh, and then therefore um, not needing to do as much of that comparison because uh, I know what I'm good at I know what I'm not good at uh, and I'm going to invest time in the thing that I'm good at instead of the thing I'm not good at. And so, which is actually kind of the, uh, the I don't want to get too into the weeds in terms of like the science and the research and yeah. the data that fueled this 
Clifton Strengths, this tool that I use. But uh, essentially, um, the short version is uh, through like 50 years of, of, of research, um, uh, they found that when people invest in an area where they already have natural talent, and talent might, talent and skill are different. And so, like, it's really important that people are able to identify what, what we're actually talking about, what we mean by yeah. talent, which is something that you just do very well naturally, uh, whether it's to do with being administrative or whether it's to do with being um, charismatic and, and great at meeting new people or whether it's to do with being highly structured or highly flexible or whatever. Yeah. So a talent in, 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 in the definition of this tool is quite, quite a broad definition. In fact, Gallup talk about it as our most natural ways of thinking, feeling and behaving. And so when we invest in those areas, we get exponential growth. So like every hour we put in, it feels like we get two hours back. Like you guys would have had that kind of experience where you're just like, flip, how did I do that so quickly? And then you would have had experience like everyone has where you invest an hour and it feels like you got 10 minutes worth back yeah. from it. And, yeah. so, <laughs> <laughs> and so I think, I think when you have an ability to measure and have a language for what are the things that feel like the first thing, exponential growth, what are the things that feel like the second thing, like absolute grind, and how can I be aware enough of that that I'm making sure I put time into the the exponential space? That's where you're going to get growth. And so, like understanding that a lot of photographers and people in the industry would be um, self-employed and have small businesses or small to medium, that's about like going: Am I going to do all of the admin stuff myself, or am I going to find someone who can support me with that? Um, which becomes realistic in different seasons and unrealistic or whatever. Um, but like, uh, just, just knowing if I pretend that I have to be well-rounded and do mm. all of the things, then I'm never going to get exponential growth. I'm yeah. always going to get real average growth. Yeah. And I think, um, on that point, hopefully this, I'm not rambling no, too this long, is but great. This okay, is cool. awesome. like the biggest thing in, in photography, the creatives in general is imposter syndrome yeah. and a confidence issue. Self-confidence yeah. is yeah. massive. A lot of us will jump into it and get really good at shooting and editing, but learn nothing about behind the scenes, about yeah. our business, about our own personal growth. Yep. Um, both Ruth and I have taken on staff members to do the tasks that we don't want to do or that yep. we're not that great at doing or mm -hmm. that somebody else could be faster at doing, yep. which is exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, then, yeah, right? cool. Yeah, yeah. And, and like hearing you use the, the term imposter syndrome, yeah. that's massive in coaching. Like yeah. I yeah. talk to a lot of coaches who are kind of going like, Man, I'm being paid really good money right now to stand in front of a group of people. They've put their tools down, so to speak. They've, you know, and and now they're looking at me. And and <laughs> you know, what have, what have I got to offer? You know, yeah. and and so um, being really confident in, in, in that is, is super important. Cool to hear you guys talk about like finding people to do the things that then free you to, to, to be. Do the things we're better at doing. Be at your best, yeah. <laughs> and that we're enjoying. And yeah. it can sound really obvious, like, of course you would. Like, why wouldn't you do that? But my, uh, I've got a really interesting view of what's going on in workplaces because I get to go out and be in different spaces yeah. all the time, almost like a fly on the wall. And I can tell you that's not, like, the norm. Yeah. To, to have enough security to let other people do mm. stuff. Like, I can tell you that it's actually the opposite, where so often, in particular with um, people in leadership, that they get into a rut where they kind of feel like they should be able to do all of the things, yeah. or should be an expert in all of the things, and then they're just not making room. And they wonder why really great people leave, and it's because they didn't get to make their contribution, yeah. because the leader, mm -hmm. or the manager, or the whoever, wasn't willing to, to give that space, I suppose. That's a really interesting way to put it, I guess, because mm. we come into this quite often from the perspective of you might be um, trying to find a part-time job aside of your full-time job, you're trying to contribute to your mortgage or something like that aside your partner's full-time income for a lot of photographers, or you're a mum and you're finding something to do while your baby's at home and stuff, and so they're going into it without any not necessarily knowledge of working in a team or knowledge of mm. maybe having staff members and that idea of outsourcing for photographers especially freaking terrifying yeah. like we don't want to let go of the things that we uh, have like our artistic control of yeah but there's somebody out there that can do it better than us yeah and going through that process and finding yeah. staff members or contractors to use for yeah. it, it's 
It's a very interesting thing. So important, eh? I wonder if it's because it's so ingrained in us as we go through our school years that if we're not good at something, yeah. we need to work harder to improve on it, yeah. right? Yeah. We're not taught that like we should push forward in the things that we're really great at and we love and enjoy. Yeah. We're taught to come back to the things that we're low at and yeah. spend our time improving on yeah. that. Like, yeah. did you find that in school? Yeah. And I feel like um, it's really easy to bring that forward into yeah. being self-employed and into our yeah. workplace. Mm. It's not until what, like year 12, you're allowed to drop a subject. <laughs> like you suck at math <laughs> yeah. and you're not allowed to get That's rid of crazy. it until yeah. year 12. Yeah. And so you don't spend your energy where it is better potentially for it to go in your yeah. art or in your nah, yeah. science. You guys, have, you guys have hit on an exact example that, yeah. that Gallup, who, um, who owned Cliffs and & Strengths and, and developed this tool, a massive research company, shout out to Gallup, because I only <laughs> get to have the conversations that I get to have because it's based on all this research. So, yeah. um, But they use that as an example. So a report card comes home, says so-and-so is doing really great, so we're gonna reduce their time in that subject, but they're doing really poorly over here, so we're gonna increase their time over yeah. here. And there's some reality to that, like literacy and numeracy is important, yeah. right? Like, You're telling me I can't drop maths? <laughs> Dang it. Yeah, there's some balance to this, of course, but like, I think you're right that um, that has become so ingrained that we then take that model into the rest of our lives and we mm -hmm. go, okay, if I am not here, then I need to invest more time. But like I said before, you're never going to grow exponentially. The, 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 the thing that I reckon gets in the way of like really great growth for people is that humans are uh, unbelievable and we evolve and we shift and we grow because that's how, we, that's how it works. And so when we put investment into an area where we don't have natural talent, we still get growth. Yeah. We measure that and we go, oh, cool, I'm, I'm better at doing that or that went faster or and that average or like below average growth then distracts us from what the excellent growth would be. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So we settle for like average growth um, instead of giving the time for, for, for really great growth. That's um, a really interesting mm. way to put it. So on that subject then, Jason, mm. what's one really generic yep. good golden nugget tip yep. for somebody to let go of holding on to all the tasks themselves? Yeah. I think, um, I think that idea that um, it's every time I say uh, yes to something, I'm saying no to something else. Mm. That's the side of it that um, sounds a little bit negative. <laughs> but every time I say no to something, I'm saying yes to something else is, is one of the ways that I teach people to think about it. And so it's that whole thing of like, what are you saying yes to when you say no? So um, I'm not going to do this uh, even though it's going to end up costing me financially or whatever. So I'm saying no to that aspect of business, but that no equals a yes. So what is the yes? I'm, I'm investing time into this and this and this. So that would be one little thing around every time you say no, you're actually saying yes. Well, I guess that kind of ties mm. into you, Ruth. Like you say no to a job, it means you get more time with your children, therefore you're a better yeah. mum. Yeah. Yeah, so do you know, just work. I had this exact conversation with a photographer recently when I sort of um, publicly said that I wasn't taking bookings for the next six months mm -hmm. because I was full. And I had a couple of photographers message me and say, aren't you scared you're going to miss out on something? Mm -hmm. Like, aren't you scared? They, they were like, we want to do this, but I'm scared I'm going to like... Turn miss out on a jobs. really good job. And yeah. I was like, but we're always mm. saying no to something. Yeah. Even when we're saying yes to something, we're saying no to something. Yep. It's just choosing which that. Is priority, right? Yeah. So for you, the time, like you've set this guideline around how many jobs you can realistically do. And this is the time you get back with your children by setting that guideline. So it's money yeah. versus quality time with your children. Yeah. Yeah, and I think like one of the things I'd add in here too, because it sounds a lot like... Um, what you need is to hire other people or contract other yeah. people or whatever. But, and, and that might be the case. Like that's definitely, I've got a, a small team. So I lead a team with three others um, and, and um, I'm really, really lucky to have them. And, and so I can give you examples of um, that from an employment point of view where it's kind of like, man, I, I'm, every day I'm grateful for what you do because it frees me up. But I think if you're on your own, and I was on my own for ages, um, it doesn't have to be about paying someone to do a thing. It can sometimes just be about like 
who do I have in my life that I go to at different times for different things? So like, I've got, um, I've got friends who, if I want to ideate, which is a very strength language thing, because there's <laughs> this theme called ideation in my top five, which is all about like, ideas are a drug, the execution of those ideas, you don't need to follow through on, it's just about ideating, just, you know, blue sky, brainstorming, go for it. If I want to do that, there's certain friends that I would do that with that I trust that their questions are going to be like, what else? Like the conversation is going to go bigger, not smaller, because they're like, oh, yeah, it's not closing things down. It's opening things up. But then there's other people in my life and, and, and Hannah, my wife, probably wouldn't mind me saying where a theme like ideation is down low. But what she's got are all these real kick ass themes that are about like getting shit done, like, yeah. like actually doing stuff. And so it's about like, I, I can go to her when I wanna, I've had an idea, I think it's worth act, like acting on, and then how can she help me to get started? So she's got a theme called Activator, which is all about like, what are your first steps? Yeah. Another theme called Achiever, which is like, what would it look like to finish this? Yeah. Um, and so if I go to her first, the idea feels like it gets squashed, like it goes smaller, mm. right? But if I go to different other friends that are close to me first, it feels like it gets bigger. Now, which one's right or wrong is actually neither because sometimes I need the like narrowing. Sometimes I need the op like things to open further and it just depends who. And, and so th that's an example where it's like a partner and a, and a, and a set of friends rather yeah. than it having to be staff, a staff yeah. contracting thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So it's about looking for like those strengths partnerships, those strategic yeah. strengths partnerships around you, wherever they might be, which, which doesn't have to be an employment yeah, setup. Sure. It could be like what we have. Me I, feel like we I was have like, it. I'm the, I'm the wide one. Mm. <laughs> We're yeah. like, let's narrow that down and get this sorted. Yeah. Um, but in saying that, like I used to work in a co-working space before I had a studio with Sarah and a bunch of other creatives and we would go in there and we would just be brainstorming all day long and things. And that's a similar kind of idea of you, you're going to grow when you're speaking to people, or when you're surrounding yourselves, I guess, in like-mindedness yep. as well. Like, because we do, as this particular thing, photographers are very insular, is that the right word? Yeah. We, we don't often, un until we're quite established in our brands, we're not often going to networking, we're not often going to workshops, we're not often speaking to anyone except our friends' family. So, yeah, like, it, you do, you definitely do have people in your lives that you can speak to, even if you're not running a team as such. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think, like, you are saying... When you say no to something, you're not just saying a yes to something else that you get to do with your time. Yeah. You're also saying yes to like giving energy and life to yeah. someone else because often they will love to do the thing that yeah. you haven't been mm -hmm. handing to them. And so it's that other, it's, it's a two-sided thing where you're kind of like, you're no to the thing that you might not have natural talent for. It's, it's two yeses. It's yes to your time going towards something where you might. And it's a yes towards someone else's strength, their yeah. talent getting to, to play out and, and, the, and the, the reason I see a lot of people leaving their work is that they, there's a contribution that they long to make but there hasn't been an inv invitation to, to make that contribution and why because like the others around them feel they have to be so well rounded that it's like oh no I'll do that and I can do that and I can do that and I can do that and I just I think it's, I think it's rubbish I think yeah. that that idea of being well rounded is so unhelpful. If people are more people are more pointy than they are round and what I mean by that is like <laughs> If you imagine a star instead of a circle, a star yeah. has like these parts where there's more and there's parts where there's less. Yeah. Uh, and, and I just think that's a better way to think about who we are. Yeah, we that's have gift really and we have lack. Yeah. 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 So on this whole thing of you, you're kind of also not just giving it to somebody else to feed their strength. Mm. You are potentially employing somebody yeah. as well, which is kind of a really cool a cool thing to do yeah and grow your little tiny business into like a little mini business or a little medium business which yeah. is really you get a lot of endorphins from giving somebody else a job <laughs> totally yeah that's cool way eh? it's a cool thing when you move from like small or solo to to having a team and you're like this is more than it's, it's more than just about me and what i need now i'm providing and and it, yeah it's, like you say it's a, a cool feeling yeah.
It's yeah. like a like a um, achievement in your business, right? Like yeah. you get to a certain number of weddings or you get to a certain number of staff or you get to a certain number of premises or whatever it might be and you've achieved something. Yeah. Um, can we ask you what one of the biggest achievements then is for you? Like what have you, what would you say was a, a massive stepping stone for you doing this? Mm, that's a cool question. I think... Um, there was a while there where I was doing the work and enjoying it, um, but it felt very flash in the pan. So like a team would say, a team would contact me and they'd say, hey, we've got this day set out where we wanna, we're going to do some adventure thing together to do team bonding and we also want you to come in for a couple of hours to what, you know, do your thing. And um, I just got to a point where I was like, I don't want to do it any longer if, people are doing it and then later on going like, ah, that was another one of those things. Because probably the biggest threat in my industry is people have experienced a really bad version of what I do or yeah. it's just been a real once off. Uh, yeah. It didn't make any difference to yeah. our life together or the team or whatever. So I think the biggest achievement to answer your question is I've moved to, I had to change model because I knew I wouldn't sustain it from a passion or energy level if it was flash in the pan so i've moved to a model where i say to people like this is a bare minimum i, I, I want to come in and i want to do this process with you yeah uh it, it uh, if you're a small organization it might take or a small team within an organization it might take a couple of months if you're medium it might be like six to six to nine months uh, if you're a larger organization, I want to become part of the furniture. It's probably going to be more like 18 months, a couple of years, where I'll be in uh, uh, um, you know, once a week or once a fortnight and doing the coaching work, working alongside people. And so um, that's been a real sense of accomplishment recently to go like, look back and go, oh yeah, I feel like I'm making a more of a long game difference yeah. in, in spaces. So yeah. you've, you've put boundaries on... on the services that you offer yeah. so that people get the best out of them. I'm still working on that. Like, um, I, like if I went to answer that as like, yes, I have, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> I'm friggin' nailing that. I, I'd be lying because like, um, actually for the most part, I wouldn't, for the most part, yep. Yeah, I've had to say, this is what I will do. This is what yeah. I want to do. Saying no so that I can say yes. Um, but it's a work on, like, I'm not going to pretend that, um, when, I'm a little bit of a, a magpie, like some of my top talents and themes mean that like when something flashy comes up, I'm like, oh, oh, you know, I want to, and, and I'm a real people pleaser too. So like, I, I, wanna, I want to say- a theme today, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I want to say yes, like, yeah. like um, but, um, so I still have moments now where I say yes to stuff that I probably should have said no to, which ends up being flash in the pan. But it's always a good reminder of like, that's why you yeah. wanted to make that change. Yeah. I guess that would be similar to Ruth and I saying we're only going to shoot this many people per year yep. so yeah. that we can give a better service to the ones yeah. that we do allow yep. in our books because otherwise yep. we wouldn't. We'd be, um, what, what do we call it, high volume at low service or yep. low quality of service. Not necessarily to say that if you are no. high volume, that's what you do, but that's yeah. what it would look like for us because we wouldn't be able to stretch ourselves that far to give each person the high level service that we do yeah. because we limit it yep. as well as the other relationships in our life. Mm. And yeah. Yeah, and I think through COVID, like, probably the reason my response is not, like, a super confident, like, yeah, I've put boundaries <laughs> up, is, like, through COVID, stuff got hard and, yeah. and stuff got quiet. Yeah. Like, August last year was the worst part of my eight years doing mm -hmm. what I do. Um, at the start, uh, I don't know if this links for you guys, but at the start of the pandemic, everyone would say to me, like, hey this sucks that we'd have to go online or it sucks that we'd have to delay or whatever, but hey, we're all doing this together. We're going to get through this thing, you know. And then August last year, uh, August 2021, um, it, people just got to the exhaustion point yeah. hey, when we went back yeah. into lockdown. And instead of them saying to me like, oh, we'll go online or we'll postpone or let's, yeah. talk, let's talk a bit later, they were just saying no. Yeah. Like, yeah. we're not doing it. Yeah. And so... Um, then the temptation to say yes to the things that you probably shouldn't say yes to increases. Totally agree, um, yeah. And so that's why the answer is an honest kind of like, I'm getting there. 
around boundaries, yeah. around what I say yes to, what I say no to. Yeah. I think everyone's getting there in something, though. I think it, like, yeah. it, it's all well and good to sit there and be like, yeah, we're so successful. But really, like as a business owner, you're not always amazing at everything all the time. And yeah. you're not you're not always able to be successful 120 And that's what this was about, right? Yeah, like, yeah totally, because yeah. different personalities are more agreeable as well, or like more yeah. people please oriented towards people pleasing as well. Like yeah. I've got coaching colleagues who are just like really good at their no and, yeah. and, and really good at their like it's it's water off their back, you know. And and for me, yeah. because of who I am and my strengths and, and all of that and understanding myself, I know that there's a heightened um, temptation to like yeah, people please to say yes yeah. to um, um, and, and like it can be exciting because it's like, oh I've never coached in that industry before. Um, but that doesn't mean that I should, you know. I feel like that's a really common thing for photographers. Oh, I've never shot that I've before. Never shot there. Oh, I've never shot at that venue. Oh, yeah. I've never shot in Fiji before. Yeah. Like, mm, yeah. yeah, guys, we don't have to. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay if we don't. Yeah. 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 yeah, cool. That's a cool link. Yeah. yeah. Um, Ruth, do you have any questions? I feel like we should throw some questions at him. Well, I so one one way that's knowing my strengths after doing the coaching with you, I'm quite aware of my top five strengths and mm -hmm. how they impact me daily and my behaviours and how that sort of plays into my business and family life. But um, I know that one thing that's always resonated with me that I've been super interested in mm. is how your strengths also come with like a set of, for lack of a better term, weaknesses. Mm -hmm. yep. And so I would say like an example for me is I've got woo right. So mm -hmm. that's like, I think, a social intelligence yeah, type stands, of thing. Yeah, stands for winning, winning, <laughs> oh, others, <guys. laughs> winning others winning over. Winning others over, woo right. stands for. But I like to talk about it like warming others over because that idea of winning is kind it's of like... Not it nice. sounds it's a little bit scammy, like a bit of icky. Yeah. But yeah. When, when so woo, woo in our industry is freaking awesome because mm. you go into a wedding and you have to win everyone over immediately, right? Yeah. So I know that like even just kind of knowing that I have that yeah. in my tool basket is yeah. really useful. But I also know, for example, when I'm in a networking event, my woo just goes crazy. Mm. Yeah. Like if, I remember being in an event in here yeah. and there was so many people and I wanted to woo every one of them. Yeah. <laughs> and my brain was not focusing on the person that I was talking to. Yeah. So my woo has like this negative side mm. as well, where it makes me unfocused, it makes me not listen, it makes me not engage in deep conversation because I'm already looking for the next person I want to yeah, woo. Yeah. And so um, that's something that I'm like yeah, yeah. interested in yeah. is, um, how we can kind of like t like tell us a bit more about that yeah cool i'll answer the question around like the different ways it can play out but i've just realized that like we're quite into the conversation and, and i probably haven't explained for those who haven't come across this specific tool um yeah. that that clips and strengths is a, a psychometric assessment that takes all of that research i was talking about all of that data they were looking for around um talent you know that natural ways of thinking feeling behaving and it kind of pulls that all together into these 34 themes so um, uh, uh, Ruth's talking about woo, she's talked about positivity, I talked about uh, uh, activator and achiever and ideation. So those are, those are themes that are part of this, make up the 34 uh, of, of these themes. So hopefully that's helpful in terms yeah. of uh, uh, the context when I go to answer the question. But um, I, my response to that whole thing around like, is it a strength, is it a weakness, might it be both? Um, uh, it's probably what I end up spending uh, a lot of my coaching time on. And I love the question because um, it's actually a far more healthy way to look at the tool than assuming these things are always going to be great. Um, that's not realistic. So uh, the way I often describe this, uh, I'm, a, I'm a little visual and I have a background in music, but like if you can picture a sound desk that you would use to mix live sound, it's got all the knobs on it and then you've got the sliding thing that you call a fader that you turn up and down, right? You've got like a whole row of those. Yeah. I like to pe think of people's strengths or, the, or their, their areas of gifting, their areas of talent as different channels on that desk, so different um, volume faders on that desk. And like, if you're mixing live sound and you think the best result is going to be to turn everything up to volume 10 <laughs> and leave it there. Me when I'm in a social <laughs> yeah. context. All, all you are going to get is feedback, literal, sound feedback you know it's going to be a horrible sound 
and, and when you watch the best sound people do what they do best, it's almost like a dance. It's almost like like their role is just as important as the people who are on stage making the mm. music, because it's like uh, um, they know that uh, rather than like I turn up. I set the volume dials, I go and have a beer and my job's done for the concert, you know, it's like, that's not the person you want. The person you want knows that like every moment there might be something I need to respond and to do, dial it up a little bit, dial it back a little bit, you know. So I like to get my clients to think about their gifts and their talents like that and then that sometimes helps to understand why something feels like why is this so great for me and then really shit for me in the same day? Like in yeah. the same uh, uh, context or the yeah. same moment, this thing that should be a good thing about me is also frustrating me or frustrating others. And it's that whole thing of it's because they're not meant to be dialed all up all at once, yeah. Yeah. you know? And, and so like I have, I can tell you examples uh, uh, till the cows come home of like when these things that I'm calling my strengths get in the way. Yeah piss me off, piss other people off, get uh, uh, frustrating. And it's when I've probably dialed them up too much. Um, or I've dialed them up in the wrong context, you know? Because, like, I'm not trying to take the metaphor too far or the analogy. I always get those two things mixed analogy? up. Analogy? Yeah. Analogy, right? I'm not trying to take the analogy too far. I could be wrong. With the sound desk. But, like, if you move that uh, gear into another room, you have to change. Like with lighting and stuff, I yeah. suppose. You have to change. You have to adjust. Yeah. Um, and so like in one context, certain things dialed up are good or they might not be, or one day certain things dialed up or one relationship, you know, like uh, when I'm connecting with this person, this works when I connect with that person. I kind of feel like with parenting, this is a big one for me, like what I've got my volume dial set at to make a successful day at work, I can then go home and if mm. I leave those dials set where they are, I wonder why it's not working, <laughs> you know, like and I, and I have to adjust. I have to yeah. adjust. Yeah. So, uh, hopefully that wasn't a too long or waffly response to that that thing around are, are they strength are they weakness? Yeah. Some, no. sometimes they can be both. I I love that idea of turning them up and down yeah. I think that's what my brain was thinking as I stood right there yeah. and was talking to this person just dial down roof mm. just dial it down mm. like it's so funny yeah. you use that example because I've seen you at networking events and like we work together but we don't speak to each other at networking yeah. events because yeah. it's off like talking to 10 different people and I've talked to three. Yeah, yeah. I just love it. Mm. I just love, I have to talk to everyone in the room. Yeah, mm. <laughs> yeah you do, girl, you do. <laughs> Which is like, I'm such an extrovert yeah, yeah. when it comes to these yeah. things. And I often yeah. say to people like, that's probably a cool place to chuck this in, like I often say to people, you, you'll know whether you've done a psychometric assessment to work this stuff out or, or not, you'll know what some of these things are just based on your energy afterwards. Like, yeah. if, if, if you do something and do it really well, but you're exhausted afterwards, it might not be one of those things that's an area of natural talent, even if you've done it really well. Yeah. Or if you do something and you do it really well and then you're just, like, pumped afterwards, there's probably an indication that that's, like, one of those, one of those things. So energy levels... Uh, uh, say a lot about those areas of talent and um, one of the one of the real challenges is people um, I've got a colleague who likes to say this we judge other people by their behavior and I would add in their like output like what they produce but we judge ourselves by our intentions um. and and so like I could watch Ruth doing something that she does well yeah. and think and assume Therefore, it's charging her battery, so to speak. Yeah. But I might be wrong. She might be performing at something really, really well, which is because talent and skill are a different thing, right? She might be highly skillful, doing a really great job or something. But it's not until we sit and have a conversation about what were the energy levels like, yeah. what was the impact for you, that kind mm. of thing. Um, so it's really easy to make assumptions based on uh, we're judging others by their behavior or their output. Whereas we really need to judge them by their intent or what they were, you know, what they took from it, what the impact yep. was for them, what they were hoping for from um, that exercise or that activity or whatever. Yeah. I think that's really, really cool. Mm. This has been so eye opening for me and probably for like everybody <laughs> listening to it because I've never had a conversation with Jason before and Ruth obviously has. So you knew a little bit about all of this stuff. Whereas I'm sitting being like, what metric? <laughs> mm. yeah, 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 yeah. We totally should have covered that at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. going to need to put that in the, sh in the show notes. You can cut it um, in. Yeah. We're going to need to cut that in somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everyone um, that isn't listening for it, half an it hour. Depends. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, well, like they get stuff for it anyway. Yeah. It's really good value. Yeah, to be honest, like I love these conversations, even if the tool itself and the language and the jargon don't come up, yeah. because um, I don't think I'd be very good at what I did if it was about if it becomes about the tool and not about people. Yeah. Then I think you've got it wrong, and you're just trying to sell something. So, like some of that jargon, like psychometric and stuff like that. Basically, if you have uh, a mirror that you can hold up that helps you with clarity around what your natural talents and strengths are, then awesome. It doesn't have to be the tool that I use. It might yeah. be. There's heaps of these kind of cool things out there. Um, but if you don't have that and you don't have that clarity, then go and find it somewhere. And Clifton mm. Strengths might be a good place to start, but it might not. There's heaps of cool other tools out there that are, that are really popular that people find helpful and people resonate with different tools differently yeah. as well yeah. and I'm the worst salesperson as you can hear for yeah, like, you're like really like <laughs> oh my god yeah, like, but I think I think you this whole conversation actually sells you in general just because it's <laughs> it's so informative and it's a different way of looking at things that a lot of people wouldn't even consider because a lot of people don't do any self-development yeah it's it's not necessarily a thing that they do and a lot of people who work in industries that don't necessarily push this mm. that then come into being a business owner like a lot of photographers do they might have seen like a sales process poster on a wall and mm. they might have a phone number that says you can get some help here but that they're not getting pushed to get any better in the sense that we do to ourselves when we come in and become business owners so yep. it's really eye-opening for a lot of people i think yeah i like to just invite people like do you it's cool to have people who ask you questions socially yeah like how are you? How was your weekend? How are the family? That kind of thing. It's cool to have people who push or challenge you or ask questions about your work. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? What have you been working on? What projects? Rah, rah. But actually, this is an in-between or, or like mm. a third thing altogether, which is like um, uh, a conversation about development. Like, in yeah. what ways are you growing? Uh, what ways are you investing in the things that you do best? It actually doesn't come naturally. And I, I see that like, that's where my value add is, is people bring me in and pay me because they can have the social conversations. Yeah. Yeah. They can have the work conversations, but for whatever reason, it's actually quite hard to have that third conversation that I'm describing. Um, not to say you need a coach, again, worst <laughs> salesperson ever. But, but you need a coach, right? you need a coach. <laughs> you, you, you need people who, who, who are interested enough that that's the kind of question that they're asking you. And just to um, elaborate on that, Jace doesn't just work in teams. Am I correct? You do individual coaching as well I'm for doing, anyone that wants it, or yeah. you ha know people that do. Yeah, yes to yes to both. Like I do bits and pieces more and more with my role leading um, Strengths Network. Uh, I have I have less time for, yep. for coaching directly, yep. um, but uh, the really cool thing about that role is that I get to align amazing people mm. with other amazing people. Yep. Where they where they sit or or um, where they fit best best alignment is, but I have set it up in a way, and we actually increased a colleague's hours um, when I took over the role, so that um, I could keep coaching. So I want to mm. keep my hand in it, yeah. and I and I do keep doing it. It does tend to be more in organisations, like I was saying before, when you asked me about something I'm really proud of that yeah. of uh, achievement. Um, um, but yeah, from time to time, it's cool to jump in with and do private stuff as well. Yeah, that's really interesting. That was going to be my question is because we do have a lot of people that listen to this yeah. podcast that are our clients and both Ruth and I, Ruth, sorry, Ruth and I shoot commercials. So mm -hmm. we shoot a lot of businesses. We work yeah. with a lot mm -hmm. of business owners and they have teams of like 10 plus yeah. people mm. a lot of the time, sometimes 50 plus people, mm. especially for, mm. for you. Yeah. Um, and I get a lot of lawyers and things like that. Mm -hmm. So it's, the people listening aren't just individual photographers. Yeah, sure. So it, I think what you offer yeah. speaks Amazing. to a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. and, and they, can, they can reach out to us. And, and um, what is really cool about the tool is you can sort of design a project or a process around an organization. Yeah. What, what are you wanting to achieve? Like for some people, they want to align, they want to Im basically embed it through the organization, yeah. which is everyone's going to use this language. Anytime we sit down for a performance management or a performance review or whatever, this is going to be written into it. So the start of the performance review doesn't go, what's not working? The start of the performance review goes, how have you been able to develop your strength lately? Yeah. You know? And then others, they might go for a slightly less embedded 
model where it's, it is more about something we can do for the team to bring some life, bring some energy, yeah. bring some momentum. Um, and so it can be designed uh, uh, around what the needs are. Yeah. yeah, so that's like working on the work workplace culture as well, yep. right? Yeah. Yeah, yep. Um, we should probably finish up because mm -hmm. you guys have children that you need to get back to. <laughs> um, so before we head off this, do you have a question to ask? Like just one final... Oh, you put me. Oh, did I put the the I can throw one out there. Oh, go on. Okay. Now that I've said it, <laughs> Anna, no. um, so where, <laughs> where can we find you again? Remind yep. us, Jason. Yeah, cool. So uh, strengthsnetwork.org yep. uh, is our organization's website. And then on the socials, if you just chuck in Strengths Network, uh, we'll, we'll pop up. If we follow you on the Instagram, will we get some like just random stories of your face giving us really good pep talks or something? <laughs> like what, what, what are we going to get if we follow you? Uh, we profile, at the moment, we're profiling our coaches quite a lot on our Ooh, social media okay. stuff. So we're kind of saying, here's so-and-so, here's the kind of work they love doing. Um, yep. So my team that I talked about is, is a small team of, of, and there's four of us, but the network includes 160 coaches across the country. So oh, wow. okay. we've, we've, we've got like uh, plenty of cool people that we can be showing, uh, shining a spotlight on and that's what we're doing yeah. at the moment. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, we've also just been chucking some stuff out there about the, uh, about the themes. So, yeah. you know, I was talking about like sometimes where our biggest difference is, that's where we can be most strategic. Yeah. So we're doing some posts at the moment I about like, posts. yeah, if yeah. restorative says, I want to fix something broken and maximize it says I want to focus on something that's already great should those two uh, always butt heads or could they work yeah. together um, so we're chucking out thoughts like that to get okay, people cool. thinking about it yeah so it'd be good value if our followers and our listeners went and gave you guys a follow on the grand yeah um, and also if you are thinking of getting a coach obviously you've got the network like we should be going on there and seeing if yep. there's somebody that suits us and in our individual circumstances yeah. and businesses mm. as yeah well. totally yeah. and I think the, the the first step for a lot of people is um, if Clifton Strengths looks like a really cool tool to engage with take the assessment first it takes half an hour 45 minutes you can do it online anytime, uh, uh, and um, there's a link on our website. That was through. my question. Yeah. Can we find it on your website? So if yep. you're interested in finding out this stuff, yep. we go to your website. Yeah, there's a thing where it says discover my strengths, yep. and you click on that, and it'll take you through to the assessment. Yep. Um, there's a small cost involved uh, there. Uh, it'll take you through to Gallup's site. Uh, uh, it costs uh, $37 to do the assessment where you get your top five. So Ruth talked about top five earlier. Yep. Um, so that's to get the first part of your report and then um, uh, it's somewhere they, they changed it a bit recently so I don't want to put this permanently <laughs> on, a, on, a, on a podcast and then people find it different but it's somewhere around the $90 mark you'll get oh, the yeah. full report so it'll show you all of your themes from yeah. 1 through to 34 but all that IP and all of the test stuff is held by Gallup so um, you can, it'll just channel you through to them yeah. and then you get, you get a cool shiny report that comes through and you don't have to engage with a coach to do that process. Yeah, uh, and um, knowing that stuff would be really beneficial for us, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. For, for it's so us good. who don't have it already, not like yeah. this girl of here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've done it twice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, so it's worth doing it, like, what, how many years, months I think like, there was about five years between each oh, yeah. time, and my strengths did slightly adjust, I mm. think, given my, that my lifestyle had changed. Yeah, I was going to say that. I remember yeah. speaking to you about your um, extrovertness and how that's changed now that you've had children and things yeah, like that. So I'm it much is well worth doing it. if you've already done it. Yeah. <laughs> if your life has changed. Yeah. The yeah. themes definitely shuffle a bit. Just a bit. Um, but... What what happens is uh, they notice that uh, a lot of the time people's top 10 themes in the tool, mm. they stay very similar and they'll shuffle around in order. And then there's exceptions where stuff moves quite dramatically. Yeah. But for the most part, if someone's done it before and they're asking me if they should do it again, I tend to say, um, if you've only got your top five, just unlock the rest of your report. That's yeah. probably a cool place to, to start because um, you can go from just the five to the 34 um, uh, with an in-between cost between okay. the two assessments yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, that's probably getting into the weeds and, and people can find <laughs> that kind of information on, on the website pretty easy. We cool. like yeah. the weird weed, weeds. The weird weeds? We yeah. like the weeds. Yeah. <laughs> Let, give us you have to be weeds. careful how you, how you I say know. it. I know. I'm just like, can <laughs> we, we, like the we weeds. cut this out? <laughs> we like the weeds. Not those kind of weeds, guys. No, okay. 
it has been so awesome to meet you for me mm-hmm. and it's been so awesome Likewise. for you to come on this and i know that our listeners will absolutely have loved us like this is so different to a lot of the other buttons mm. cool so i'm really glad that you came here we will put well we i will put <laughs> i will put all of the links in the show notes for everybody show so notes can... are not my strengths <laughs> Hey, say no to the show notes. You're yeah. saying yes to something else. Exactly, Ruth. You are doing our Instagram oh, yeah. beautifully. Yeah. So I will job. do those show notes. Yeah. I'll, I'll chuck those links in there so that people, um, if you want to, you can jump in there and go and find all the things and learn about the things. And I'm going to go follow you after this because I want to get like told cool. about stuff. I should probably do these things. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Heath. Thanks for having me. Yeah.